with very few interruptions and only momentary interruptions. I've been working here since 1967. Then finally, we moved forward to 1977. I'd been working an employee for 10 years, and I came to Frank Jensen that owned the place and said, I, uh, I can't make much, enough money standing behind this county here to raise a family. I've been managing this place pretty much for three or four or five years. I think that you should sell me this place and, uh, you know, and, and I'll have it be my shop at that. And he initially had no interest in it at all. Uh, we wheeled and dealed and rambled and stambled and, and fought. And we ended up agreeing that if I was foolish enough to pay him $450,000 for these three lots here on Coast Highway combined, if I was foolish enough to pay him $450,000, then we could have the property. So we signed a lease with an option to buy it. At, by the way, at the end of that 10 years, I exercised the $450,000 price and the property was worth easy seven fifty, eight fifty. dollars okay? And Frank Jensen was an honor, always was an honorable guy, a strange guy, but an honorable guy. And he's going, TK, you got me on this. And, but he didn't try to wiggle or, uh, or pull any shenanigans. He sold me the property. If I hadn't owned this property, if I didn't own this property, I probably wouldn't be in business today because I'm surrounded by big box retailers on both sides of me here that uh, have a whole lot better inventory than I do. And uh, they'd probably put me out of business. But my overhead is low and I can uh, survive on less volume than they do. It used to be a surf shop was identified by the board it built. If you wanted a Greg Mill surfboard, you went to the South Shore, I mean, excuse me, went to South Bay to Greg Mill surfboard and you bought them there. You couldn't buy one anywhere else. If you wanted a Velzy surfboard, you would go to maybe the Velzy shop that used to be two blocks south of us here that is a big belly deli nowadays. That was Velzy surfboards and you'd buy your Velzy right there. But uh, today, the kids want to buy nationally advertised brands. Wonderful surfboards made, made by Lost Surfboards, made by Channel Island Surfboards, my, made by Rusty Surfboards. They're great products. You can buy a Channel Island Surfboard in probably 140 different stores in the nation. Nothing exclusive about it, but that's how the kids uh, have developed and that's what they're looking for. Highly advertised uh, uh, brand names. These big manufacturers can have afford to hire high quality surf team guys to represent their product in the water and it's a money maker for them that's great in the olden day if you surfed out in front of uh, the frog house here you'd be want to be riding a small faces surfboard because that was made right here straight across the street if you weren't on a small faces you were a little more uh, of an outsider you'd go get a russell surfboard down by 22nd street and surf a russell surfboard and if you went down there on a small faces they hey you're from the uh, you're from up north a few blocks but the culture was amazing and it was it was beautiful then an interesting thing happened. The, the movie, The Endless Summer, uh, got debuted in Wichita, Kansas in the middle of the winter, and it sold out for, I don't, I'm guessing, eight or 12 nights in a row, sold out in the middle of winter in Kansas, and surf culture exploded in the, in the Americas. And Jan and Dean, who didn't even surf, started singing about uh, Surf City, and, and, and uh, the, the Beach Boys came along. No, the, the Beast Boys came along and started singing and it, you know, it exploded. Culture was great and it went coast to coast and everybody wanted to dress like a surfer. And uh, I guess it was okay, except it led to clothing companies. And these clothing companies for many, many years have been running the surf culture and running the surf world. And up and down the coast, we've got hundreds of these huge clothing stores that use surfing products as a motif to sell their clothing. By the way, a lot more money in clothing. By the way, I never grew up wanting to work in a clothing store. My store is not a clothing store. At the Frog House, we'll have what I call 80% hard goods, which are surfboards, wetsuits, leashes, things you use to surf, and 20% soft goods, which are swimwear. We sell t-shirts, and but that's about what we sell, swimwear and t-shirts. But you go to these very financially successful big box retailers, they got 80% soft goods and 20% hard goods. You can still go buy a surfboard there. You can still go buy a wetsuit there. But boy, they want you to come there and buy the high ticket items, which are clothing. 
Clothing is a bigger markup than uh, surfboard. Surf, surf culture is suffering. It's not completely lost. It's still wonderful. And for a kid to start in 2019 and just begin surfing and never ever get a taste of the same old true surf culture that I got to experience is a shame. But he's still going to have an amazing time and an amazing life ahead of him. It's still positive the whole way. I am blessed with having my own little shop here where the surf culture lives better than it does in most others. And it's not just an old man blowing his own horn. I get told this multiple times a day over and over and it's one of the things that keeps me going.